Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to make this little post ink stamp. These are little things that get stamped over your payment stamps on your letters. The process is really easy, uh, probably aimed more at the beginner user rather than intermediate or advanced user. But nonetheless, let's get to it. Okay, to start with we're going to draw a circle. So we're just going to come over to our little ellipse tool here under the square. And just make sure that you have your um, stroke set to black and we'll turn off the fill for the time being. Alright, so we're just coming to the middle of a page and holding Alt and Shift, we'll just draw out a circle. Give me any size you want, I'll just draw it like that. And um, then we'll increase the size of the stroke. So we'll just come up to the top here and we'll make the stroke about 3. Yeah, that looks good. Then just grab your pointer tool and copy this circle by pressing Control c and just go Control f to paste in front and then holding alt and shift go to the corner here and we'll just shrink that in so we got the uh, base object for our stamp all sorted here all right so next step we're going to want to add some text in here and now i'm going to want the text to curve around on the inside of this to do that we're going to need a uh, path to guide our text around so i'm just going to use this inner circle here and I'm just going to copy it by pressing Ctrl C and then press Ctrl F to paste it in front and I'll just, holding Alt and Shift I'm just going to drag it out just a little bit so the text isn't hard up against that line there and then we'll come over to our Type tool and we'll just come down to Type on Path tool to use this it's easy as just going over to the path that you want making sure it's selected and then just clicking on where you want the text to begin so I'm just going to type in New Zealand. You can type in whatever you want. It doesn't have to be New Zealand. I'm just doing that because that's where I am. And we'll make that text a bit bigger. Sweet. Alright, so first off you're going to see it's it's not going to line up. We can easily adjust this by selecting that text again and then coming over to these lines here don't click on these little boxes we just want to click on these lines and as you can see a little line of an arrow next to it comes up to it we want the one that's pointing to the um to the right and then we click and we can just drag that around until they line up like so yeah that that's all right um i'm just going to make this outer circle a little bit bigger just so that the text isn't hard up against it and then we can use then we can type in the text for the bottom part here now to do that I'm going to use this outer circle but I want the text to appear on the inside of the path so we'll just do what we did before is we'll select this circle here and just go Control c Control f and I'll shrink it in a little bit holding Alt and Shift like so Again, clicking our Type on Path tool, and I'll click where I want it to be. And we'll just type in something to fill in the space. I'll go Post There we go. And we'll just come up to the top here and click our Pointer tool. Now, to get this text on the inside, we again grab this line here and you'll just drag it around to the bottom and then we'll grab this center line which you can see is signified by an upside down T and then we can drag that around and place it there like so again it doesn't line up so we can just grab this line here and just bring it around a little bit that lines up alright and there you go alright so obviously this path that is text here is sitting on doesn't exactly line up with this one here so we're just going to click that again and we'll just hold alt and shift and we'll just visually align that like so now doing that it's going to shrink your text as you can see it's been shrunk down to 17.39 whereas it was 18 so we can just make that text big again we'll just click it back to 18 and there you go it all lines up now I'm going to draw in some little circles here and there. This is as easy as coming and grabbing our lips tool again. And then making sure that you got black for the full colour. Just come in holding Alt and Shift just draw in a little circle. And with your pointer tool we can arrange it. Um, to align it exactly to the centre, 
what we'll do is we'll select everything and then we'll come up and we'll click on this align to center here and that should align everything to the center and that way we can just go and click that copy it paste in front by pressing ctrl c and ctrl f and we can just bump it over using the arrow key on our keyboard and just visually align it like so so there that's most of the hard part done now we're going to just put in a little picture in here and possibly a date down the bottom so first off i'll just type in a date so we're just going to type in 2nd November 2012 and we'll just shrink that down a bit so it fits in there nicely there you go and you can stick in any image you want in here I'm just going to uh, grab a little map of New Zealand that I've prepped earlier you can grab vector maps of your country from most free vector websites there's an abundance of them on the internet um, to switch documents like that you just press control tab and we'll just copy and paste it in obviously that's a bit big so we'll shrink it down a little bit holding the shift button to keep it all confined and there we go we've got the foundation well pretty much the most part of our postal ink stamp going on here all right, so now I'm going to put in some little squiggly lines. You see them on your letters that you get posted to you. They'll have little scribbles that go over the um, payment stamps. Um, pretty easy to do, but if you're unfamiliar with the pen tool, you're going to probably find it a bit hard. But anyway, I'll, I'll run you through the basic operations of a pen tool. Um, so this is the pen tool up here. It looks like a little ink pen. I'll just click that. And basically, when you click once, it's going to put down a starter point. So from there all we have to do is come across to where you want your second point to be. I like to hold shift because this will confine it to um, a horizontal line. And while you're holding shift, click and hold. And then we can just drag out the little handles like this and they'll make us a curve, like so. Um, obviously I've got the full set here, so if I press shift X it's going to change it to a stroke like that. And then coming make sure we haven't deselected it or anything we'll just come over and we'll draw another line over here holding again holding shift and we'll just click this time because I've already dragged out a handle this will represent the curve for that size so again holding shift and we'll just click there you go and it's already put in a nice curve there because it's got the handle in already and I think we'll do one more one more curve over here so we'll do a holding shift and click and hold and we'll just drag that handle out now you notice when you're holding shift it's going to confine your handles to a 45 90 horizontal kind of degree thing this is good if you want to keep things nice and accurate and round about the same so we'll just drag it out so it roughly looks the same as the one next to it and then just holding control you click anywhere to deselect that now these curves look a bit deep to me so i'm just going to grab my pointed tool select it and we'll just drag them up like that that looks a bit better probably increase the stroke to about I'll go about two points yeah. now to reproduce you reproduce this all the way down like you see on a letter we're just going to copy that and paste it in front by pressing ctrl c and then ctrl f and just holding shift and pressing the arrow key we can drop it down and then we can just press ctrl f multiple times and we'll get a bunch of lines out like so there you go and we'll just select all those together and we'll group them so they become one object you can do that by pressing ctrl G and we'll just move them in a bit closer there to our stamp so there you have it this pretty much most part of the stamp done now the next steps I'm going to take you through we're going to put in um, some textures on over top of it using the transparency mask um, the key advantage of this using a transparency mask over previous me previous methods of um, textures that I've gone through is that the transparency mask will actually make the textured areas transparent so things behind it will show through so yeah that's quite handy when you're using this on top of things like maybe a mock-up letter or whatever all right so to use a transparency mask to make textures and stuff what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a pointer tool and select everything and group them all together 
The transparency mask works the same way as the layer mask does in um, in Photoshop, whereas whatever is black will be excluded and whatever is white will be shown. So um, yeah, basically we're just going to grab our transparency dialog box. Now if you don't have this, again just go to Window, click in Transparency or control, um, Shift Control F10, now bring it up. And just making sure that your object grouped object is selected, you're going to come over here. Now you're going to see in this window here, you got your little image there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up to this menu here, and we're going to go make opac opacity mask. Sorry, and all of a sudden your image disappears. All right, to use the mask, what we're going to do is you see the bounding box around your image. We're going to go and click on the mask area here, and making sure that that bounding box is on there. And then we're just going to come up to go uh, File, and then we're going to go Place, and I'm going to choose Texture. I'll make this texture available on my blog for you guys to use as well. And then I'll just paste in texture, place in texture in the mask, and whatever is white on the texture will show through, and whatever is black will be excluded. Easy as that. Alright, so from here obviously we're still on our mask mode, so we just want to click back to our um, image there. And now we can go back and edit that within it if you want. Just um, if you ungroup it, you're going to lose the texture. Just be aware of that. So yeah, there you have it. That's all done. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please feel free to hit the like button. Also subscribe. I'm always making more of these tutorials. And yeah, have a nice day.